Assalamu alaikum, welcome to RAC lecture 1 for week number 2. I hope all of you are doing well and safe from the epidemic. This will be our fourth lecture and that is it will be the first lecture of the second week. I welcome you all in this uh, session. Uh, my name is Nu, is Dr. Muhammad Al Shamra. And uh, the topic is related to multi pressure system. Earlier, we have discussed two other systems. That is, uh, we have discussed a single uh, compressor and two evaporator system, and we have discussed a, 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 a one compressor and one evaporator with, with the intercooling and flash tank. So this one will be two compressor and two evaporator with intercooling and flash gas removal. So we are going to discuss the energy balance equation for this one and we look at the schematic diagram of it and the process diagram of it and then do the mass balance and the energy balance for it and then solve the example numerical for it. So let's get started on this one. Two compressor and two evaporator system. So as you can see in the diagram here, as, as you can see in the diagram here, we have a, a low stage compressor and a high stage compressor. And uh, then the condenser, the evaporator, uh, high temperature eva evaporator, and low temperature evaporator. So two evaporators with a flash tank and intercooling. So the refrigerant from high stage compressor will go into the condenser, and from condenser it will be split into two portions. One will go into the low temperature evaporator and the other portion will go into the flash tank. So what goes into the low, uh, high temperature evaporator, it will absorb some heat from the surrounding and then it will, uh, it will come out of the evaporator and it will mix with whatever is coming out of the flash tank and then it will go to the high pressure, high stage compressor. The second part which is coming to the flash tank, so part of it, the, uh, the whatever is the uh, evap uh, vapor in it, the flash gas in it, will be removed immediately and it will go and mix with the what's coming out from the evaporator, uh, uh, high, high temperature evaporator and from here the li liquid refrigerant will go into the second evaporator which is the low temperature evaporator and then after absorbing some heat it will go into the low stage compressor and from there, from the outlet of the low stage compressor, it will go to the flash tank. And in the flash tank, it will be dipped inside the uh, refrigerant, inside the liquid refrigerant. So it will get cooled. And then it will start bubbling up. The vapor which is coming from the low stage compressor will be bubbling out from this liquid and then go into the, uh, uh, come out of the flash tank and will mix with the first evaporator. Uh, Vapor, whatever is coming from here, and all of them will combine at state three. State three is basically is the inlet of the high state uh, compressor. So as you can see, uh, the 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 mass of evaporator one is what is coming out from the flash tank. That is m dot seven, m dot eight, m dot one, m dot two. They are all the same. Dot seven and dot eight and dot one and dot two, they're all the same mass. Okay. And then M dot three, M dot four, M dot five are the same. M dot three, four, and five is the same, which is passing through the condenser, passing from the high stage compressor and then to the condenser. It is the same. But I want you to pay special attention here that what is coming out of the flash tank is not just what is going from here from slow stage compressor into the flash tank 
but there is a flash gas removal here. Whatever after after the refrigerant which has gone to first evaporator, this one here. Uh, this evaporator here, okay. The remaining which is coming here, the remaining which will be coming into the flash tank, it will have both. It will have liquid refrigerant and some vapor. So that vapor will be get separated here, and it will travel in this direction, okay, in this in this direction. And so it will get mixed after the remaining of the liquid when it comes from from the outlet of the flash tank and goes to the low temperature evaporator then to the low, uh, low stage compressor and then from the outlet of that it will dip inside the liquid refrigerant and then it will go to this same to get mixed with this one okay so what is coming out from here is um, is not just what is going from low stage compressor but some flash gas also that's what I would emphasize it has both it has the vapor saturated vapor you can say that which is coming from low stage compressor and the flash gas which got removed both of them will enter here so we are going to mark it as a m.1 this one and m.2 this one and m.3 m.3 is the is the mass of the high uh, high stage compressor which will be the total of all this which is coming out from the evaporator one which is coming out from the low pressure pressure compressor and what is getting separated in the flash tank will be mixture of all three three of them so note that m.5 is split up into three in into two streams one to the high temperature evaporator and the other to the intercooler and flash tank Mass flow rate handled by the high pressure compressor can be obtained by performing a heat balance about the high temperature evaporator and intercooler. So if we want to find out what is this mass which will be handled by the high pressure, high pressure evaporator, this mass, uh, this M3. So to, to get this M3, we have to do an energy balance about the flash tank and the first evaporator. These two. We have to make an energy balance. I think these two. I have the bigger diagram here. This is the first evaporator. This is the flash tank. We, both of them combined together, we consider one system. This dash dash line is showing that system. So if we want to do an energy balance. That is, whatever energy is coming out should be equal to whatever energy is leaving this system. So what is coming in is this M5 is coming in into the system and what is coming in is this uh, M2. So M5 and M2 are coming into the system and M3 and M7 are leaving the system. So this is the energy system. M5, M.5, H5 is coming into the system from here. If these two are the system, let me see if I can delete this guy. Yes, I have an error there. I want to delete it. Can I delete it? All right. Now, I'm making a system around here. Considering the system is combining these two, like this. This is the red line here is showing the complete system. Okay. So now I want to move this one. This one this. Okay. There you go. So this is our system. So energy which is flowing in. Is of course with the mass, so uh, uh, that is m dot five, or you can say m dot six. No, m dot five, m dot five, because m dot five all will come into this system. Uh, uh, even after it splits, like six here and six here, even then it will be coming into the system. So m dot five, the entire m dot five is coming into the system. So m dot five h five is coming into the system, and M dot two H two is coming into the system. Okay, so these two mass plus this uh, evaporator will be absorbing some heat, some heat from the surrounding because it's an evaporator, so it will absorb heat from the uh, refrigerator box. You can say that. So it will be absorbing some heat from here. Okay, so that heat has to be accounted for. 
okay and like this evaporator it says 200 kilowatt that it is absorbing they have this refrigerating capacity so it will be absorbing 200 kilowatt from the surrounding medium so these three energy m dot 5 h5 q dot l hd high temperature high temperature evaporator the, the refrigerating capacity of the high temperature if that heat will be coming in and m dot 2 h2 that is coming into the system what is leaving the system is this m dot 3 and h3 is leaving your system okay and plus m dot 7 h7 and m dot 7 h7 this is what leaving your system okay if we do this energy balance and we know that m dot 5 and m dot 3 are same so i can replace here m dot 3 h5 all right and here m dot m dot 2 sorry m dot 2 and h7 will be same m dot m dot 7 m dot 7 the mass at this point and the mass at this point will be same of, of course whatever mass is leaving from the flash tank it is the same mass which is traveling to evaporator and to the low low uh, stage compressor so m dot 7 m dot so we are going to replace that one and copr copr is q dot l divided by the um, uh, work required by the compressor so q dot l will be low temperature low temperature evaporator plus high temperature evaporator these two refrigerating capacity of these two and then work required by these two compressors low temperature compressor high temperature compressor okay replacing the um, equations for them m dot 1 h1 minus h8 and m dot 6 hd into h3 minus h6 divided by the two compressor one okay so i hope you understand these equations the only thing you have to remember for your problem solving the miracle is that in this two compressor two evaporator situation you have to make sure that you do an energy balance about this system you need to do an energy balance about this system which is a combination of a, the first evaporator and the flash tank if you do that successfully the rest of it is very easy So here is the example problem uh, for this situation. So it says a two stage ammonia system. A two stage ammonia system is using trash gas removal and intercooling. So the refrigerant is ammonia. Okay. And so we will be using uh, the chart and the graph table and the chart for the ammonia and as you know for ammonia you have saturation table but you don't have superheated table in your handout so for superheated condition we have to use the chart so it's a it's a same scenario as i was explaining in the previous slide it's a flash tank okay we, we, we will have here uh, flash gas removed and then the Vapor from the low stage compressor will be dipped inside the refrigerant, it will cool down and then it will come out here again. So, state 2, which is here in the superheated region, state 2, which is in the superheated region here, it will be from here, it will be cooled down because of this, because it is going inside the refrigerant, it will come to state 3. Okay, and then it will go to the inlet of the second compressor high, uh, high pressure compressor okay after uh, getting the second stream from the evaporator okay. so these two will be separate from there let's see uh, the condensing temperature is 35 degree centigrade so this condenser is looking at 35 degree centigrade the saturation temperature of the intermediate temperature evaporator is 0 degree centigrade so this one is 0 degree centigrade the and the capacity of 150 kilowatt. The 
cooling capacity or refrigerating effect produced by this evaporator is 150 per watt. The saturation temperature of the low temperature evaporator is minus 40 degree centigrade. This one is at minus 40 degree centigrade and its capacity is 250 per watt. Okay. What is the rate of refrigerant compressed by the high stage compressor? What is the rate of refrigerant compressed by the high stage compressor? This is the high stage compressor and the mass it is compressing is m dot 3. So what we need to find out is what is m dot 3. Right. So the, the saturation points are 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. These we can find out from the table. But for the superheated points 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, we have to use the uh, chart for that. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. So given is the refrigerating capacity of high temperature evaporator at 0 degree centigrade, Q dot LHD is 150 per watt. We can use that to find out what is M dot 1. Okay. And then refrigerating capacity of the uh, low temperature evaporator at minus 40 degree centigrade is Q dot L and LT for low temperature 250 per watt. Because this refrigerating capacity is given and we can find out what is the and H3 and H6, and what is H1 and H8, so we can figure out what is the mass flow rate. Because Q and this one will be equal to H3 minus H6, and Q dot of this one will be equal to H1 minus H8. Because we will be finding these out by the table, so we will be able to find out what is these two mass. But we need to find out what is the mass at M dot 3. Okay. Condensing temperature is 35 degrees centigrade. Find out the rate of refrigerant compressed by the high stage compressor M dot G. Right. So that is what we need to find out. So moving on, as you can see, I have redrawn that process diagram here. So um, the low temperature, low temperature evaporator at 250 kilowatt. It is producing 250 kilowatt, and uh, high temperature evaporator producing 150 kilowatt. Okay, this is the information here. H1 is is this one here, which is saturated vapor at minus 40 degrees centigrade. I have copied this from the original table. This data which is required here. These four lines from the original graph here. I don't think that you can see it here, yeah, that's why I need to copy it. So one first one was first one was what minus forty degrees centigrade. So if you look up minus forty, which is right around and I can't see it here, right here. Let me mark it for you. Minus forty right here. Minus forty degree right here. And we need what uh, HF or HG? We need HG. HG right here is 407.76. So if I go back, if I go back, I copy the same table. It is 14.07.76. So H1 is 1407.76 divided by 2 gram. H3. Right is again H G at zero degree centigrade. H G at zero degree centigrade. Fourteen sixty two. As you can see, it is fourteen sixty two. Can find here at zero degree centigrade. Let me pick up and pan with a different color. Okay. Okay, you add 0 degree centigrade right here, right here is the 0 degree, right here is the 0 degree centigrade, and we are looking at 1462. If you can see it, I don't think that it is visible to you, but if you can see it, it is 1462.24. So I have copied it, made it a little larger here, 1462.24. So that is our H3. 
basic colleges, 24 kilojoule per kilogram. H5 is saturated liquid at 35 degrees centigrade. Now, 35 is not there in the table. Saturation table doesn't have 35. We have a 34. We have 34 degree right here and 36 degree. So we have to take an average of the two or we have to interpret the other way. So the value will be these, these two here. No, not that much, sorry. Uh, let me take here as well because this is H, HF. I don't need HF. I need, I need the uh, H, uh, HF, sorry, not, not HE, uh, not HE. I need HF, which is this one 370 and 380. Okay, that's what I mean. So if you look it up, if I go back here, if I go back here, and these two. So I need from 361 and 370. So if I interpolate for 35 degrees, then I will get H5 as 366.08 kilojoule per kilogram and H5 and H6 will be same. H5 and H6 will be same. Okay. H5 and H6 is same. H5 and H6 will be same. Because they are asymptotic process. Okay, constant uh, constant entropy process, 5 to 6. So H5 and H6. <coughs> now H7 is again saturated liquid at 0 degree centigrade. So that should be right over here. 0 degree centigrade saturated liquid 200 right here. So you cannot touch it here. I think I have to touch it right now. So 0 degree centigrade. 0 degree centigrade is, is this point here, the green one, and 200 with this one, which at 200. So that is in H7. And H7 and H8 are same because they are constant in the process. So H7 and H8 are same. Now for the, these two points, which are into the superheated region, for point 0.2 and point 0.4, we have to use the chart. Point 0.2 and point 0.4, we have to use the chart. So we are going to draw this thing on our psychometric chart, draw this process on the psychometric chart with 35 degree centigrade and uh, 0 degree and minus 40 degree centigrade. So, Let's go and check it out how we do that one. So this is the 35 degree 1.5, maybe 1.3 saturation pressure. You can look it up in the table. This is for ammonia R717. So I draw that line, that horizontal line for the condenser pressure or condenser temperature. Then this is the high temperature evaporator, which is close to zero degree. Okay, this red line is at 0 degree centigrade. So the, the constant temperature line is this way. Let me show you. There you go. Constant temperature line. Constant temperature line is. Constant temperature. These are the constant temperature line. It goes, let's say, I pick up. So this is the constant temperature and it goes this way and then it becomes horizontal in the saturation state and then it goes in this direction like this. This is the constant temperature line. Okay. So at, at zero degree or the high temperature evaporator. So I draw this red line here. And this is the uh, uh, low temperature evaporator at minus 40 degree centigrade. Okay, 
minus 40 degrees centigrade. This is the minus 40 degrees centigrade line, which is coming from here. Minus 40, if you can see it here, right there, minus 40 degrees centigrade. So it's coming this way, and then it will become horizontal, constant temperature, and from here, it's not visible, but it will go somewhat like this. This is how it will go. Okay. Constant temperature line, or like coming, which is coming in this direction, vertical first, then it becomes horizontal, and then it goes in this direction. All right. So, uh, there you go. So these are the two, three temperature lines. So we start for state. Uh, For state, let's go back, go back. Okay. State one is the saturated condition at minus 40 degree, and then whatever is the entropy value here, one to two is the compression in the low pressure compressor at it's an isentropic process, so at constant entropy line. So we are going to find out what, where is this point one. And then from that point one, which is on the saturation line, and this minus 40 degree line. So wherever these two cross the saturation line and the minus 40 degree line, that is point one. From that point, we'll pick up one entropy, and we will follow that entropy till we reach the zero degree line. Okay. So so this is my minus 40 degree line. And this is the saturation line. So point one is somewhere here. Point one is this one here. This is point one. Yeah. Okay. okay, this is the saturation point here. Now, if you look up the entropy value, I can see it is 6.00 is this line, and this line is 6.4. And our, our point, point one, is somewhere in the middle of the two. So we we'll draw a parallel line between these two lines, the best parallel line that you can draw. And that line, wherever it cuts your uh, high temperature evaporator line, that will be the point 0.2. So this will be point 0.2 here, this will be point 0.2 here, okay? And then if I draw a vertical line, which I have drawn it here by, by the dash dash green line, this line, and then we can read what is the enthalpy value of 2. So what I read here is, is H2 of 1660 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. Sixteen sixty kilojoule per kilogram is what you read from the you can read from the from the chart. Okay, now the second one, point 0.4. So point from point 0.4, we'll find out what is the entropy at point 3, and then we will draw that entropy line, follow it till that 35 degree centigrade temperature line, and wherever they pass, that will be point number 4, and then we can read directly downward in this horizontal line, which is the entropy, and on the x-axis is the entropy, what is that value? That will be our H4. So, as you can see, so this will be the point, uh, this will be our point number three right here. Because this is the zero degree line right here, and this is the saturation curve. It crosses right at this point here, so this is where our point three is. From there, if you look it up, it is five point six. The entropy is five point six, and it is it is it is at five point six. Approximately, it is at five point six. So we'll you know, extend this line from point three till it reaches the condenser pressure. This blue line. That will be our point four, wherever it crosses it. So it is crossing at this point here. That is our point number four. And from here, this orange line, orange or red line here, that is your value for 
enthalpy of 0.4, which I read as 1600 here, it is about 1600, so I will write it as 1613. And for H4, sorry, 1613 to 2.4 gram. Okay, so I hope you understand how to read your. Um, the chart, how to read this in uh, a pressure enthalpy chart. From there, I got this two right. So, now as I said, because we have been given the uh, capacity, refrigerating capacity of uh, low temperature evaporator, this one, H1 minus H8 into M dot 1, because we already know what is this value. This is one, one, uh, 250 kilowatt. So, we should replace the value. Okay. I have the H1 and I have H8, H8 and H7 are the same. So I can get M dot 1 as 0 0.207. All right. Now the high temperature evaporator capacity is equal to the mass which is going into the into that evaporator and then H3 minus H6, H3 minus H6. So H3 and H6 are already known, H3 and H6 is H1, already known. So I can find out what is this mass. So this is the mass which is coming from the evaporator. This is the mass which is coming from this evaporator, M6. Okay. Get into it and then come out from there. Alright. And uh, we have find out M, M.1 which is this mass here. Okay. We have found out M.1 and m dot 6. But we need to find out what is m dot 3, the mass which is daily dealt by the high pressure compressor. Okay, that's what we need to find out. So for that we have to do an energy balance on the high temperature evaporator and the intercooler as I discussed before. So the energy balance equation will be this one. Okay, Here m dot 5 and m dot 3 are same. If you look it up here, M.5 and M.3, they are same. They should have to be same, okay? And okay, this is 3 here, okay? This is 3 here. This is 3 here. The same mass is going into the high pressure, high stage compressor, and then it will come out, same mass will come out, and it will go to the condenser. And same mass will come out here. So M.3 and M.5 has to be same. Alright, so M.5 and M.3 is same. So I can replace this M.5 here with M.3 and M.2 and M.7 are same as you can see in the diagram M.2 is this one here M.2 is this one here M.2 is this one here and M.7 is here so Whatever mass is coming out of the flash tank or the liquid refrigerant coming out of the flash tank that will go into the Evaporator, low temperature evaporator, from there it will pass on to the low stage compressor and then from outlet of the low stage compressor to the So 2 and 7 are same. So I'm going to replace that. So M dot 7 will be M dot 2. M dot 2 and M dot 7 are same. These two points. M dot 2 and M dot 7 are same. 2 and 7 are the same mass. So we will replace that one here. So I will have only two mass, M3 and M2. Okay, so M3 we need to find out. Okay, we need to figure out this M3 and M2 we have calculated earlier. Yes, we did, didn't it? Because we found out what is M.1. M.1 and M.2 are same. M. 1 and then the 2 are same, these 2 are same. So once I found out what is m dot 1 is, that is equal to m dot 2. Okay, m dot 1, m dot 2, it is the mass of the low, uh, low stage compressor. Okay, so if I solve, we know all the other values. If we solve it, we we'll get m dot 3, which is 0 0.043 kilogram per second. That is what was required, that is the rate of refrigerant compressed by the high stage compressor M.3 equal to 0 0.043 kg per second. I hope you understand, I hope our people 
this um, diagram and read the values. This will need some practice from your end. You have to draw it and you have to read these values. They have to equally distribute because there is a very small gap here. So you have to equally distribute and you know, use this scale to draw this vertical line and then you know, use this scale to do the equal division between 1600 to 1800. So like 1700 in the middle and then further refine it to find out what is the value at your point, point at your point of interest. So uh, if you have any question on these numerical, be ready for it. You should know, you know the slide number and the question. Then if you tell me, then I will give you the explanation for it and the answer for it. But have your, uh, have your uh, uh, tables and chart handout that we gave you reprinted and handy to you. So you can refer it really quick, okay? I uh, thank you again very much. Thank you.